How can you balance two people of a different weight on a seesaw? Good morning, students. I'm Mr. Boscarini, and for our unit on forces and their effects, today we're going to discover moments. In our previous lesson, we have introduced the topic of turning forces or moment of a force, which is the effect of a force around a turning point, also known as pivot. Today, we're going to see what happens if we have more than one turning force, usually trying to opposing each other. So we're going to state and use the law of moments, and we're going to see how we can uh, make a turning force bigger. And of course, we can also see how we can make it small. So let's imagine we have a meter stick, like the one you see here in the picture. So our question is how we can balance different weights on this meter stick. So this is our meter stick. So as you can see, it's one meter long. So the first thing is how we can balance this by just holding with one finger. And of course, being one meter long, I expect this to be balanced at in the middle at 50 centimeters. So let's see if this is true. Okay, and here we are. Okay, more or less in the middle. Okay, so once you have this, once you have your meter stick more or less balanced, as you can see, still going a little bit sideways. Okay, now let's start to add some weights. Now, if you remember, each one of these um, discs is 100 grams of mass. 100 grams of mass corresponds more or less to one Newton of force. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to block my, my mirror stick and I'm going to place one of these here on this side. Now, from my point of view, this uh, weight is applying a turning force which is counter or anti-clockwise. From your point of view, it's the opposite. You're going to see it um, clockwise, okay? So it, it tends to make this, go, this thing go down. And I placed the, um, uh, the mass exactly 10 centimeters away from my finger. So my question for you guys is, what if I take another one, so same size, same kind of weight, and I want to place it in order to balance it. And just think for a second, but the answer is pretty obvious. If this is 10 centimeters on your right, this has to be placed 10 centimeters with respect to my finger on the left. So let's do that. Let's have this over here and this over here. And let's see if these two balance each other. Okay, and I will let go. And not surprisingly, they are balanced. Okay. So let's add one more level of difficulty. So again, I'll have my mirror stick balanced at 50 centimeters, okay, on my finger, okay. I will take Again, this one Newton of weight, one Newton of weight, but this time, instead of placing it 10 centimeters away from my finger, I'm going to place it 20 centimeters away. So I'm, I'm basically doubling the, there it goes, uh, I'm doubling the uh, moment that it is, is it applying on my, on my meter stick. Now, and right now I'm holding the meter stick with the other hand, I will add two weights here. So these are 200 grams, which means two newtons of weight. Um, so my question for you is now, in order to make our meter stick balanced here in the middle, where should I place them? And again, you can think about it, but the answer, it's obviously again, 10 centimeters away from my finger because this is one newton is 20 centimeters away from my finger this is double that force in order to have the same moment i need half 
half the the distance so let's see if these are placed properly this thing is very very sensitive to the correct position so you really need to be careful here okay so let me lift this a little bit okay let's see if it's balanced correctly just a few seconds more nope and not surprisingly it balances okay there you go so what did we learn from this demonstration uh, it's again the point of the turning force turning force does not only depend on the force depends on the distance from the pivot so if you want to balance one force on one side it depends really how far away it is from the pivot and you have to take that into consideration all given the main point here is that equilibrium so when you have your object like a seesaw balanced the clockwise moment must be equal to the counterclockwise moment and i really want to uh, finish this uh, short video just by looking at your typical problem the so-called seesaw problem so let's imagine we have a seesaw so i will draw a seesaw here i draw the beam okay so and Let's imagine these are not centimeters, of course. Let's imagine these are meters. So it's a really, really long seesaw, okay? And let's imagine we have a kid goes to the park and this kid uh, sits here on this part of a seesaw, okay? So we have this kid sitting here, okay? And let's imagine that this kid has um, a weight of, let's say, 400 newtons okay which is approximately 40 kilos so not a very big kid okay so you know that the moment the turning force applied by this kid on this beam on the, this, this seesaw depends on not only on this force but also on this distance which we see is four meters so let's let's calculate that so we're going to call this v in which direction is this thing moving it's moving down on this side and this is what we call a counterclockwise moment or in short we're going to call it c c w okay counterclockwise or anticlockwise this is the same um so this is given by the weight of this kit so 400 newtons 400 newtons times and I'll use the dot here for multiplication, the distance from the pivot. So I'll write four meters. And this is very simple math. 400 times four makes 1600. And I will write to remind you the units for uh, turning forces are newtons times a unit for distance. And in this case, we're using meters, okay? Okay, obviously, in this situation, the uh, seesaw is not bad. So let's add another kid who's going to sit on the other side. But let's imagine this is a very, very large kid. Let's imagine this is an adult, okay? So I'll, I'll draw someone who's really big here, okay? Whoa, super big, okay? And let's imagine this person has a weight of double this value 800 newtons okay and of course by sitting here this person is going to apply a moment which is clockwise now the point is i want this moment to be the same so i want the counterclockwise moment the moment applied by this kid to be equal to the moment applied by this person over here which is also clockwise so since this person is twice the weight of this kid can you imagine where this person should sit 
should uh, this person sit at the same distance? In this case, would be here. Should we sit more far away from the pivot or closer to the pivot? And in both cases, exactly where? So just, just think for a few seconds, what is the solution you're, in your opinion? So, if you thought uh, this person should move closer to the pivot, of course, it's correct. Now, if you're increasing the force, you need to decrease the distance. But how much? Of course, since the person is twice the weight, no, it's like the example with the demonstration I did with the mirror stick and the masses, this person has to sit at half the distance so we have to move him or her doesn't really matter not a four meters away from the pivot but two meters away from the pivot so exactly here at the 10 meters mark and just to be sure about this we can do the math here so i'll write down here the clockwise moment the clockwise moment from this person here on the right is again the weight so 800 newtons times the distance which is two meters and the result not surprisingly is 1600 newtons per meter which is exactly the counterclockwise moment now you can do a lot of exercise about this you can do exercise when you balance on a seesaw and you and you can use that to find the weight of one of or one of the two forces which are missing you can do this in order to find the distance like we did we you can have more than two forces more than two turning forces acting on the seesaw but i think that's all for today so goodbye from mr boscarini